there are few brands in the coffee world that are as widely recognizable as Mazer. With nearly 75 years of building grinders and burrs, they've built a positive reputation within the industry, including many other companies who build their grinders around Mazer burrs. And personally, I'm not new to Mazer either. I've been an owner for nearly six years, and I was a little surprised to see them toss their hat into the hand grinder market, at least before they put out a single dosing grinder. But here we are, this is the Mazer Omega. There's no doubt it's a handsome piece of coffee gear, and coupled with some smart features and a quality set of burrs, it seems like it's a worthy competitor on the premium hand grinder market. And at this point, that's merely just an assumption, so in this video, I'm going to put the Mazer Omega through its paces, in terms of testing its features, performance, quirks, and everything else in between. But quickly, I should say that the folks over at Mazer reached out to me and offered to gift me the Omega to use and review. As always, and with all of my reviews, there was no expectations, agreement, or compensation in exchange for the review, and all the observations made are unedited and mine alone. And with that said, let's dive into it. In a lot of ways, if you've seen one hand grinder, you've seen them all. But the Omega does have a few unique features, so it's worth doing just a quick once over. Straight from the box, the Omega comes in four simple pieces. The main body of the grinder itself, which is made of stainless steel and aluminum. The crank knob, which again is aluminum. The crankshaft itself that's made of steel and carbon fiber. And a couple of rubberized grips. Along the outer rim is the external grind adjustment that features a true zero and a total of 60 stepped clicks. In the center, the crank connects to the grinding mechanism, which of course travels down into the 47 mm burrs that Mazer designed specifically for the Omega. So at this point, I should probably clarify that the Mazer Omega has two burr options, soft grinding and fast grinding. The Omega that I have is the soft grinding option, which according to Mazer is designed to reduce the effort while grinding, and the fast is intended for just that, high speed grinding. Which, in my personal opinion, in a hand grinder seems sort of antithetical, but we'll get more into how the soft grinding burrs perform in the next section. As we move down the grinder, the last piece is the quick release catch cup. And finally, what I would call the Omega's party trick, some cleverly placed magnets to hold the crankshaft and the handle down for more compact storage and travel. Since most, if not all hand grinders are relatively simple mechanisms, I would say the workflow doesn't really change a whole lot. If you've used one hand grinder, you've generally used them all. Essentially, it's just adjust the grind, drop in the beans, crank it, and brew it. But there's one piece of the Omega that directly affects both the performance and the workflow, and that is the soft grinding burrs. Which I mentioned earlier were designed by Mazer to reduce the effort while grinding. On the first few grinds it didn't feel all that easier, but after a few rounds of grinding there was a noticeable reduction in sticking and friction, even when compared to other hand grinders. This is even more noticeable when grinding for espresso. When all of the grinding is said and done, the catch cup comes off with little fuss, and the tapered sides makes for a smooth exit of grinds into your brewing method of choice. And the grinder itself retains very little coffee, in the majority of my tests it was 0.2 grams or less. Since one of the main marketing points for the Omega is its ability to grind for all brew methods, I put it to the test in both filter and espresso. Unsurprisingly, it's plenty capable in the filter department, producing tasty, well-extracted cups with all the qualities you'd expect from a quality conical grinder, including a nice full body, balance, and even a little more clarity than I would have expected. And from there, I adjusted the grind finer, back to Mazer's recommended espresso range and found that I needed to be pretty close to the bottom of their chart for a traditional shot. With that said, of course, the Omega is capable of producing quality espresso, both from the visual and the taste perspectives. Yet, I did find it struggled a bit when trying to exceed past the 20% mark. And finally, when it comes time to clean the grinder, it's very straightforward and quick. Plus, it doesn't require any tools. Just make sure you keep track of all the little bits and pieces. Even though it's pretty clear that Mazer knows their way around a coffee grinder, the Omega, like any other piece of equipment, has its issues. But the one that stood out to me is in its grind adjustments. And much like many or most hand grinders, each adjustment or step is known as a click. As you may already know, each click on the hand grinder represents a certain number of microns, which translates to the grinds getting that much coarser or finer. 
and the Omega's clicks are 33 microns, which to the naked eye are very, very small. But when you compare it to other premium hand grinders like the King Grinder K6 at 16, the 1Z Presso K Pro at 22, and the Common Dante at 30, these essentially mean that making those fine adjustments that come particularly handy when dialing an espresso aren't available. And unfortunately, this isn't where my grind adjustment woes end. During my testing, when I dialed in for a shot of espresso, a cone-shaped or a flat bottom dripper, I found the corresponding numbers to be surprisingly close, with espresso landing squarely at 20 clicks, a V60 hitting between 25 and 30, and the flat bottom like an Aurea between 30 and 35. Unfortunately, this leaves you with very little to no adjustments for dialing in these brew methods, and leaves it to the barista to adjust doses or other variables to make up for the lost ground. By comparison, this is a pretty minor annoyance, but when I use a hand grinder, I tend to tip it slightly for more leverage. But because the Omega isn't closed up top, I've had beans either fall or get clipped out of the chamber while grinding, even with small doses, so you'll want to be mindful about your grinding angle. And I'll be lying if I didn't acknowledge that the price of the Omega will be a big hurdle or a deterrent for those looking to jump into premium hand grinder ownership. Coming in at a whopping $425, it's considerably more expensive than its closest, more adjustable, and readily available competition. Alright, so here we are, the final thoughts on the Mazer Omega. It's clear to me that in terms of build quality and materials, it's top of the line. The use of stainless steel, aluminum, and carbon fiber makes it feel both sturdy and not overly heavy. The crank itself has a buttery smooth travel and the implementation of the soft style burrs does feel like it makes a difference in the grinding process. But there are a couple of major points where I think it falls short. For one, with its 33 micron adjustments and lack of usable clicks on the dial, it seems like anything past 35 won't work on most brew methods, outside of the French press. And beyond that, I think the price tag, when you consider its competition, is going to really hold it back from becoming widely adopted by home baristas. And with all that said, I think it's time I wrap this one up and pass the conversation on to you. What are your thoughts on the Mazer Omega? And did you plan on picking one up this fall? Did this review sway you in one direction or the other? Also, are you interested in seeing a Mazer single dose electric grinder? Because I know I am and I know that they read the comment section. So drop your thoughts on that and any other questions you may have in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spromethius for content throughout the week, my blog at Spromethius.com, my coffee at littlegiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated. Pony boy.